Hey guys, welcome back to Young Americans Abroad, your best place for weekly content on young American soccer players playing overseas. My name is Austin Van Churn, and welcome to our show. Well, guys, it'll just be me today. Uh, you know, Pat and my schedule uh, didn't really line up this week, so unfortunately he won't be with us for this episode. But uh, yeah, we got a lot to talk about today in our episode. You know, Josh Sargent made his Bundesliga debut this week and also also scored his first Bundesliga goal, so we'll talk about that. Also, we have uh, two contracts, uh, or sorry, excuse me, two transfers. Um, I believe one's not confirmed yet, but I know one is. So we'll talk about both of them. And then also uh, one of our players signed his first professional contract. So we'll get all into that and uh, let's get to it. All right, guys. So like I led with in our uh, intro, we're going to talk about Josh Sargent first today. And that's because, you know, he finally made his Bundesliga debut. And this is, you know, something we've been waiting at least the first part of this season for. And, you know, also ever since he's really made the move over to the Germany, we've always had an eye on, you know, him making his, his Bundesliga debut. So it was really cool to see that from uh, Josh on Friday uh, for Werder. And, you know, to completely, you know, best just starting uh, or, you know, making his Bundesliga debut, he actually scored um, two minutes after coming on for Werder Bremen. So that was, you know, impressive. Um, it wasn't the best of goal, but, uh, you know, it was a, a simple tap in where, you know, Martin Harnik um, got a foot on a cross and Josh was in the right spot at the right time and just headed the ball into the goal. It looked like it was going to, you know, go in anyway if he didn't head the ball in. But no matter what, you know, he's a striker, he's a poacher, and, um, you know, he was there to, to put the ball in the back of the net no matter what. So, you know, really cool to see Josh score that first Bundesliga goal. Um yeah, I mean, the rest of the game, he didn't really have too much involvement. Um, you know, he played only about 14 minutes or so, and he had one really errant pass in those 14 minutes, um, but he really didn't get, you know, too many opportunities to showcase what he's all about. You know, he had some good movement from time to time, but he was tasked with coming on um, and preserving Bremen's late lead, um, which, you know, he added to with the goal, but, you know, Bremen were up 2-1 when he came on um, in the 76th minute, and then after his goal, you know, they were up 3-1. So, you know, he did his job. Uh, Dusseldorf, the team that Bremen played, um, didn't score when he was on the pitch, and they didn't really, you know, put together much when he was on the pitch. So, you know, job well done from, uh, from Josh, and uh, it'll be interesting to see, you know, what the rest of the Bundesliga season holds for him. Um, you know, it was, it was funny um, to hear Florian Kofeld's, uh, I guess, his, his comments on the game um, after the weekend. And he was actually talking about Josh Sargent. You know, he's done this a lot throughout the season, you know, telling us that Josh is doing well in training and could be or may not be in the squad, um, you know, for, for games. He's done this all year and he's kind of played with us. But, uh, you know, he kind of played with us again after this game and said that, uh, you know, a good goal for Josh would be to have five to six appearances um, this season in the Bundesliga. So, you know, that's not too encouraging, I guess, coming off of a game which, you know, Josh made his debut and then scored. But I understand, I guess, where Florian's coming from. You know, Werder Bremen have a lot of options um, at attacker, uh, not only striker, because, you know, he said that his striker can should be able to play on the wings. And I think, you know, Josh from time to time in his, in his brief appearance, kind of, you know, went out onto the wing and, um, you know, uh, I guess uh, kind of changed positions when he was on the pitch a little bit. You know, he didn't do it, didn't do it too much. But um, I guess I understand where Florian's coming from um, because they do have, you know, a lot of attackers that they need to get minutes um, to and more, I guess, mature players that he trusts more, you know, including Max Crusa. Um, Claudio Pizarro, who's actually played pretty well, even though he's 40 this year. Uh, Yuya Asako, who's a Japanese player who's had a pretty decent season. Um, Jonas Egestein, who's played very well. Martin Harnik, who scored in this game, and then also, I guess, had the assist for Josh's goal. So, you know, I understand where he's coming from. Um, I'd hope that Josh would, you know, at least be in the 18 more than five to six times, if that's 
you know, if he, if he's really going to make those appearances, I hope he's in the 18 more than the amount of times he, he makes appearances. Um, since this was also his first time in the 18 um, for a professional game, to my knowledge, I'm almost positive on that for some reason. I don't feel as confident as I did before I said it. But, um, yeah, you know, we'll have to see what the rest of the season holds for Josh. I think he's going to have to, you know, make the most of his opportunities when they come to him. Um, you know, he's probably still going to be playing – a lot for the U23s. So if he can keep up his goal scoring rate that he's had for the first part of the season with the U23s, I think that'll also earn him some more game time um, with Werder Bremen's senior team. And uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what what happens, you know, from here on out. Um, one interesting thing to note um, after this game, and I think it was a stat that was put around um, by a few different people on Twitter, but uh, Josh has actually scored on his debut at the US U17 levels, the U20 level. Uh, the men's, you know, senior national team level, the Werder Bremen U23 level, um, and then also, you know, the full senior team at Werder Bremen. So that's pretty impressive. Um, five different debuts and scoring in all five of them. That's pretty legit stuff. Um, so, yeah, we're, uh, you know, obviously very optimistic here. Um, me and Pat are both very high on Josh Sargent, as I think a lot of other people are. So, you know, we'll, we'll – We'll keep monitoring him at Werder Bremen and, uh, you know, keep reporting back to you guys. Hopefully we get to talk about him a lot more coming up here in the next part of the Bundesliga season. So now moving over to, I guess, England, and uh, we'll talk about Zach Steffen now. So I know, you know, last week we had a little segment um, that was kind of in the Ethan Horvath segment about Zach and his move to Man City, where we gave some, um, you know, gave our opinions on the – I guess the pros and the cons of Zach's move to Man City, but just wanted to go into it a little bit more in detail this week. Um, so it was actually confirmed today on Twitter that uh, I guess it was by Columbus Crew's account that uh, Zach Steffen will be moving to Man City uh, in the summer of 2019. Um, I guess in July, they said, because that's when the transfer window opens. Um, so, you know, that's interesting. You know, last time when we reported on this, we thought it was going to be taking place, um, or his transfer move we thought would be taking place this winter, and he'd be going somewhere on loan for the next part of the, or I guess the first part of the 2019 season, uh, the spring portion of that season. Um, but it looks like he'll be staying with Columbus Crew for this spring. So that's, uh, I think that's good in my mind. Um, you know, I think it's good to consistently be playing, especially now with a new coach at the men's national team level. So I think, and even though Greg Berhalter knows what type of player Zach Steffen is, I think it's, it's good for Zach to be consistently playing with the Columbus crew for the, you know, the spring. I think that's a good thing. And I'm also, you know, happy because now Zach's not going out on loan if he went to Man City in the winter um, and trying to fight with the goalkeeper who's already kind of earned his spot with this team, whether that's at, you know, Nack Breda, who aren't doing so hot right now, um, Nice, which is a, you know, a high-level club, um, or I would say a pretty high-level club um, in a good league that, you know, already has an established keeper, and the same with Hirona, um, you know, in a very good league, La Liga. So I think it's a good move. I think going in the summer is actually a really, really good idea. It also gives him some more time to maybe get his ducks in a row for a U.K. work permit. Um, you know, I think like everyone else has said, and you know, I'm, I'm no analyst or, uh, specialist, I guess, in work permits in the UK. So I, I really say either way, but people seem to think that the more men's national team appearances Zach makes, especially in games that actually count and I guess hold weight, um, the better his chances are of obtaining a UK work permit. So with that being said, I'm a little timid with this move as to whether or not Zach can actually, you know, lock down this uh, men's national team starting goalkeeper position for the Gold Cup, which is what people are saying. If, you know, Zach plays the whole Gold Cup and the U.S. advances to the finals or the semifinals, it sounds like he will have a, a very good shot at getting that U.K. work permit. I'm a little timid on whether or not he actually can um, lock down that starting spot, you know, from now to the end of the Gold Cup. Because I think Ethan Horvath is is coming along very well and uh, you know playing playing very well at the moment, um, especially in Champions League. So uh, that'll be interesting to see. Uh, I would hate to see Zach Steffen make this you know very um, I guess what's the word I'm looking for? Very aggressive move or uh, a move where he's you know challenging himself. Um, 
to have it kind of backfire and, you know, him lose his place in the, the U.S. men's national team lineup and not be able to get a U.K. work permit, that would be, you know, very unfortunate. But at the same time, you know, I want him to earn that starting goalkeeper position for the men's national team. And, you know, if Ethan Horvath's playing really well, it'll be hard to, you know, tell Ethan, no, you're not going to be our number one uh, just because we have an agenda to fill with Zach Steffen. That'll be a an awkward conversation or an awkward situation if that does arise, which right now it looks like it very well could arise. So, you know, that'll be something to monitor. Um, I guess going into the Man City transfer a little bit more, it is the biggest transfer for any goalkeeper in the MLS, which is, you know, congrats to Zach. That's a pretty big accomplishment. Um, you know, where... Where Zach's future is, uh, you know, like I said, with the UK work permit, if he does get one by the end of the summer, uh, again, not sure what that, you know, not having a UK work permit, what that does with training at Man City, whether or not he could actually train without having a UK work permit. I would, would think he'd be able to, but if he can't partake in Man City's preseason until, you know, he gets clearance, then, you know, I find it hard to believe that he's going to be with Man City for the 2019-2020 season. But, you know, we'll have to see what the future holds. I think it's very likely that Zach could still go out on loan after he makes his move over to England. But I would be okay with him staying at Man City, uh, especially if he's the number two keeper behind Ederson because, you know, at any point in time, Ederson could go down with an injury and, Zach will be thrust into the limelight and it'll be up to him to prove that, you know, he's a goalkeeper that has a, you know, a big future and can, you know, live up to the expectations put on him at a club like Man City. And, you know, if he doesn't, then, <laughs> hey, he tried. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think time will tell, um, especially when you get closer to that move in the summer of what Man City's plans for him will be, you know, especially – now that Claudio Bravo um, is injured right now, but now that the move will be taking place in the summer, it'll have uh, or he'll have time to heal um, by the time the 2019-2020 season rolls around. So it might not be such a pressing need for Zach to be at Man City. But again, like I said, something to monitor, and we'll report back to you uh, with any you know further details that we hear. So um, exciting stuff. We'll stay in England right now and actually talk about DeAndre Yedlin who unfortunately was red carded in Newcastle's 2-1 loss um, to Wolverhampton Wanderers this weekend. So it was a red card that took place in the 57th minute and it came off of DeAndre's um, horrible touch that I guess was a back pass to the goalie or maybe just a, a dribble move. Um, basically he was, you know, looking upfield or, or position going upfield and then tried to uh, kind of dink the ball back to get around a defender or, like I said, pass it back to the goalkeeper. It was, you know, kind of right in the middle of both of those decisions. And, um, you know, the Wolverhampton Wanderers attacker picked up the ball, started dribbling into the box, and, uh, you know, DeAndre took him down right outside of the box. And it was deemed, you know, a, I guess a clear and obvious chance at goal uh, denied. So, unfortunately, he was given the red card. Um, so, you know, I think this was a little – representative of uh, DeAndre's entire season. Um, you know, he's had a lot of ups and downs this year. I haven't watched all of Newcastle's games, so if if you think otherwise and have seen, you know, more of Newcastle's games than me, uh, you know, feel free to comment below. I might be wrong on this, but, you know, I've seen, I would say, about three, three and a half games or so um, of their season so far. And I would say in two of those games, he's looked, you know, pretty good. He's, you know, he's done – you know, as, as well as he could in the game when I was watching him. And then in, like, the other game that I saw and then piece of a game that I saw, he did not look so good. So, um, you know, I think it's been a very inconsistent season from DeAndre. Um, and I think, you know, in this game, it kind of showed that um, just from the extended highlights. He, he had a few moments where he looked uh, a little suspect. And then, obviously, you know, the red card with the, the bad pass or the bad dribble move is, is not good at all. <laughs> so, um yeah, I, I think, you know, we've kind of started to figure out DeAndre Yedlin. You know, he's he's a very fast player. He's a player who's, like I said, kind of inconsistent. Um, at times he'll play very, very well, and at times he'll play not so well. And he'll, you know, 
kind of be lost on the field on the field at times. So, um, you know, with that being said, I think he is our best right back at the moment, especially after the last game when we saw Reggie Cannon kind of get exposed and and not look nearly as good as he did in his first game for the men's national team. Um, so, you know, you know, with that being said, I mean, you know, he's playing in the Premier League. I, I do think, you know, because of that inconsistency, he is definitely a mid table or bottom table uh, Premier League player. Um, and at the moment right now, that's that's good enough to start for our men's national team. So um, nothing to really scoff at, but just wanted to bring that up. Um, and it's also interesting to note that Newcastle right now sit in 15th position in the EPL table. Um, and that's three points ahead of the relegation zone. So, you know, DeAndre will be out for the next game and Newcastle will need to, you know, to continue pick up points to pick up points here, especially coming up on, um, you know, their period of, of games around uh, Christmas where, you know, Premier League teams are playing like once every three days. So now will be a pretty important time over the next few weeks for uh, Newcastle to get points. And let's hope DeAndre can get back on the field and, you know, help uh, contribute to some some of those performances that they're going to need uh, coming forward in the future. So just wanted to mention that, uh, talk about DeAndre. But now let's move over to uh, Holland and talk about a player who earned his very first professional contract this week, and that would be Serginho Dest. So Serginho... Um, actually played over the weekend as well. So let me talk about that real quick. So he featured for uh, Young Ajax yet again, started at right back, played 90 minutes in uh, Young Ajax's 1-0 win over a team, I believe, called Top OSS. Um, not exactly sure if I'm saying that right or, you know, what ty type of team they are with that name. <laughs> but, um, yeah, he, uh, you know, played again for, for Ajax's reserve side. Um, looked pretty good from the highlight video I saw on Twitter that was going around. Um, you know, looked dangerous in that right back role yet again. A uh, very technical player um, coming along nicely. And, you know, he completed the weekend on Monday signing his first professional contract with Ajax, which will run till uh, 2021. So, you know, that just having a contract offered um, is pretty, you know, representative of where Ajax see him um, in their academy. Um, and going forward, you know, that's a pretty big accomplishment and definitely shows that, you know, Serginho is a player that they, you know, have a future mapped out for. Um, so that's pretty exciting. Um, and it also just, you know, reaffirms what we've already started to see this year from from Serginho. You know, he's he's really looked like a good prospect and Ajax is rewarding him for that. Um, so just going into, I guess, a little bit more detail about where um, Serginho stands on the depth chart of right backs at Ajax's, you know, club as a whole. Um, right now, I believe they have four first team right backs, um, and they actually are playing a 21 year old right back at the moment who I don't have the name written down, um, unfortunately, but he's kind of Ajax's, uh, number one right back. So it'll be interesting to see, um, whether or not he'll be, um, you know, moving on in the future or not. I think, you know, uh, a player that's 21 years old is not ideal uh, to be, you know, playing behind. But at the moment, um, you know, Serginho's thriving for for young Ajax. But uh, yeah, and then they have another player. Um, oh man, I'm I'm losing all these names. I had them all in my head, and now I'm forgetting them. But uh, there's another more senior team player who's a right back and center back, um, and he'll. Uh, Joel Veltman, that's the that's the player's name I'm thinking of. And he actually plays more as a center back or has in the past. Um, they kind of converted him to right back when they didn't really have any right backs on their roster a few years ago. So, you know, he's kind of above uh, Serginho um, on that first team depth chart. Um, he's also injured right now, so that's something to note. Then they also have, I believe, two more, uh, Rasmus uh, Nissen Christensen, who's a Dan Danish uh, right back who's played a little bit for them this year. Um, pretty good prospect. I believe he's only 20 years old as well. So that's another young player that will definitely be in competition for, you know, playing time if Serginho is ever called up to that first team um, for Ajax. And then I believe they have another Colombian um, right back who's 23 years old. So, um, you know, some young players at Ajax, nothing unheard of. And, you know, he'll have to, you know, prove his worth, you know, in the the, the season coming up, and then also if he does get an opportunity uh, this upcoming summer, that'll be uh, something to watch. So 
Um, just wanted to give some some insight into uh, IX's you know future and and what their foreseeable plans could be. But you know that's really uh really impressive that Serginho is now a uh, you know a professional I guess at IX. But uh, now let's go over to Germany and talk about yet another player who is making a move besides Zach Steffen. And it sounds like Chris Richards will be finalizing his move to FC Bayern in the coming weeks for a fee that is reported to be around $1.25 million. So that's a you know pretty impressive fee for FC Dallas to get from a player who never even appeared for them in a, in a first team game. So, um, you know, that's pretty, pretty groundbreaking. I think this might be one of the first uh, solely youth team players who's really had no affiliation with a senior MLS club to actually get sold for a fee. Um, I may be wrong on that. Uh, comment below if I am. But, uh, you know, that's a, that's a pretty impressive feat. Um, and it's really cool to see, you know, Chris Richards has said all along ever since he went over to Germany that he'd like to stay in Germany. So I'm very happy that, you know, FC Dallas is accommodating him and his demands and his desires because it sounds like, you know, FC Bayern think he's uh, a good prospect and a player that they – would like having so I'm really happy that FC Dallas was willing to at least negotiate with uh, with Bayern and you know you know they could have been sticklers I guess and try to get Chris Richards to come back to Dallas and you know maybe try to play him next year in this upcoming MLS year but um, you know that's that's really awesome to see Chris Richards uh, what it seems like staying in Germany and uh, playing you know for the youth teams at Bayern um, you know, right now he's playing with the U19 team um, and we'll have to or we'll be able to play with them until the end of the season. After that, um, it'll be interesting to see, you know, wh where he goes from there and where Bayern see him fitting into their, um, I guess, academy or just their club as a whole. Um, I think that's a very interesting item to talk about because, you know, this transfer is great and it's um, – you know, another player in Europe, another player pushing himself to play at a higher and higher level. But after the season, you know, what is what is Chris Richards' uh, career path going to be at Bayern? Is he going to be a U23 player for them, which I don't think would be the worst of, of things to have happen. You know, Bayern has stashed a few of the players that they seem to really, really like on that U23 team, which is their two team. And he also, uh, Chris Richards also was on the bench for that two team um, last weekend. So I don't think it would be, you know, the end of the world if he did play with this U23 team next year, but could he also go out on loan um, from Bayern, kind of the Timothy Tillman route? Um, is that something that they are looking at with, you know, purchasing him? Um, so it'll be interesting to see what his career path will be at Bayern. I think that's something, you know, worth, worth talking about and discussing because, uh, you know, it's it's good to play for the U19s this year, and he's done really well with them. Um, but, you know, once he's he's purchased, now he's got to, you know, prove himself even more and become a full professional. So, um, you know, really happy for Chris. With all all being said, might have gotten a little too, uh, uh, I'm not pessimistic, but, you know, I was trying to play devil's advocate there a little bit. But, you know, really happy for this move um, for Chris Richards and, you know, can't wait to see what he can do in Germany. All right, guys, it's that time of the week again. It's time for Quick Kicks. So you could test Dwayne Miller. It's Altidore over the wall, and that one is in. Josie Altidore from a long way out. The opening goal for the United States. So to start off Quick Kicks today, we have Christian Pulisic, who only played two minutes in Dortmund's 2-1 win over Schalke in the Riviera Derby uh, this weekend in the Bundesliga. And then in the Champions League uh, match this week, uh, he played 90 minutes in a 2-1, or sorry, 2-0 win over Monaco and also uh, progressed, was top of their group um, and progressed in the Champions League to the uh, round of 16. So congrats to Chris Christian. He looked pretty good in this game. Um, actually was involved in both goals, um, you know, before the assist and before they were scored. So that's good to see. Now, staying in Germany, we want to talk real quick about Weston McKinney, who played 90 minutes for Schalke in that 2-1 uh, loss in the Revere Derby uh, to Dortmund. So unfortunate, you know, to be on the wrong end of things for Weston over the weekend. Now going over to Denmark, uh, Jonathan Amon made his return to Nordsjælland's first team, playing 17 minutes in their 1-0 uh, win, I believe it was, over our house um, in the Danish Superliga. So that's good to see. 
Now going over to Belgium, um, Ethan Horvath had, uh, well, I guess he lost the game uh, in the league uh, for, for Bruges this weekend. So it was a 2-1 loss to Vaslin Beveren, um, but he played 90 minutes in this game. Uh, then he followed that up with a very good performance um, against at, against Atletico Madrid in the Champions League this week, um, and in that game he earned a clean sheet in a zero zero draw. So good for uh, good for Ethan. Now our last player this week in quick kicks is Shaq Moore, and he actually played ninety minutes in a Reus de Portillo's one nil win over Al Coracon um, in the Segunda League over in. Uh, in Spain. So congrats to Shaq starting to finally get some playing time for uh, Reus. Now staying in Spain, we want to make sure we mention our young ya this week. And that would be uh, Rayshon McGinn, who's actually a 18 year old midfielder, formerly of the Atlanta United Academy, um, and will now be playing at Getafe uh, CF over in Spain. So congrats to him. Um, definitely one you want to keep your eye on. He'll be playing with the Juvenil A side there to start things off, which from what we've seen from, you know, Barcelona's academy and how we've been tracking Conrad De La Fuente, Juvenil A seems to be the U19 level. So, uh, you know, congrats to Ray Sean and definitely one to watch for the future. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. Make sure you like our video and also subscribe to our channel. We also have, uh, you know, some great social media. We have a fantastic Instagram page and fantastic Twitter page that both uh, are over 2,000 followers now. So thank you guys for that. And, uh, you know, make sure to follow both of those. The links will be in this video. And, uh, you know, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Um, you know, we love to interact with you guys. Make sure you leave a comment on anything that we've, uh, we've talked about in this episode. You know, a lot of moves are uh, taking place right now as the uh, winter – transfer window uh, approaches. So hopefully we'll see some more of our players, uh, you know, moving abroad and some of our uh, younger players getting some playing time in the new year. But, uh, you know, as always, one day we will win the World Cup.